Okay, in this video, I want to talk about embedded programming hardware, which I use for project development. Now, this is my PC. This is my mini PC where I write all my code. It has a quad-core processor, and it runs Windows 10, 64-bit, and it's a Minix Neo Z83-4, and it's very small. You can see the comparison to a breadboard or Arduino Uno. You can see the size difference. Now, it's fanless has a solid state hard drive so there's no moving parts and it's very quiet it only consumes about 3 watts when it's running normally and it can run on DC now it has USB ports you see four of them on the side it has an HDMI port for display it has an Ethernet port which is a gigabit port and you can see the power connector there it has an antenna and this antenna is for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi which is dual band now, I don't have any of my personal photos or videos or online banking account or email account or YouTube or Facebook, so there's no social media. This is strictly for development. And I only have a few programs running on this computer. One of them is TeamViewer, which is a remote desktop software. So I could get into this computer remotely from anywhere in the world, and I could control anything that's connected to it, like my Arduino Uno or my Nano. Now, TeamViewer uses full encryption. It's very secure from client to client. It's totally encoded. It has the same security level as, as HTTPS, which is SSL, Secure Socket Layer. Now, when I want to control something from anywhere in the world, I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So I also have a webcam. This is a Logitech webcam. This is this C920. So I have this connected up to the computer. So if I'm controlling any device, I could actually see it being controlled through the webcam. Okay, next. I want to talk about the software which I have loaded onto my PC which I use to program all my microcontroller boards and we'll start out with Atmel now this is Atmel's AVR ISP Mark II programmer and I use the software AVR Studio in conjunction with this programmer to program the Arduino Nano and the Arduino Uno so I use the fourth programming language so I upload a program called Interactive Arduino which is basically a hex file and that's loaded into the 18 mega 320p microcontroller on each board and once that's loaded onto the board it has its own interpreter and compiler on board the chip itself so now I just use a serial terminal program called TerraTerm to interact with the microcontroller and I do all my development using TerraTerm and you'll see that's quite common to all the microcontroller boards that we're going to see in this video okay next we're going to look at the Parallax propeller microcontroller now this is a multi-core microcontroller so there are eight 32-bit separate microcontrollers on the chip itself and this is a chip here now to program this chip you need some software from Parallax and it's called a Parallax Propeller Tool and it's available off their website and you can download it for free then you can upload your program through this USB port into this EEPROM then on boot up the contents of the EEPROM will be loaded into RAM and then the program will run now I'm using the fourth programming language to interact with this microcontroller and I interact through the serial port using TerraTerm so if you have a pro project that you have to monitor a lot of activity in the outside world this might be your, your best solution because it will save you writing a lot of interrupts okay the next board we're going to look at is made by ST Microelectronics and this is their discovery board which contains a Cortex M4 ARM microcontroller which is the STM32 F407 now this microcontroller which we see here can run at 168 megahertz and has one megabyte of flash on board so you can write a very large application now if you look at the board this part of the board here is a hardware programmer to program the chip itself but we need special software which is available off their website and you can download it for free and it's called ST Link now once you load ST Link on your PC you can upload your program through this USB port directly into the microcontroller now I'm running the fourth programming language on this microcontroller. I interact through the serial port using TerraTerm. So if your project needs a very powerful computer, microcontroller, that's very fast, has a lot of memory, and a lot of peripherals, this might be an option for you. Okay, this is the last board we're going to look at. Now this is the oldest board, the one I've used the most. I built a lot of projects using this board. Now this is an x86 board, so basically it's a mini PC. And you can power this board from 7 to 34 volts using this connector here. And you can see the switching power supply, which outputs plus 5 volts and 3.3 volts. 
or you can power it with a 5 volt regulated supply using this connector here. Now this board has half a mega RAM and half a mega flash on board and the flash is divided into two drives, two solid state drives, an A drive and a B drive. And if you need more flash memory you could add a C drive which is this module here and they come in different sizes so you can build very large applications. Now you can program this board in any language you want that runs native on a PC and generates an EXE file and you can upload it into the flash drive and execute it. So when you gain access to this board using TerraTerm through the serial port you'll get back a C prompt and you can do a DIR command which will give you a directory and you can execute any program that's on the flash drive. So that's a few examples of some of the microcontrollers and some of the boards that I use so when I run across a project I just pick the one that fits my needs the best. So that might give you some ideas on what kind of microcontrollers you could use in your project. Okay, here's my little demo setup. I have an Arduino Nano on a breadboard. Now I can gain access to the Nano from anywhere in the world over the internet using remote desktop software called TeamViewer. Now TeamViewer is very secure. It's encrypted. It's HTTPS secure. And when you first run TeamViewer, it gives you an ID and password to gain access to the computer. Now you have the option to enter your own password. And I've entered my own 12 character password with upper and lowercase letters and with numbers and symbols so it's very strong. Now once you get into the computer, the computer will be locked down. So you have to unlock the computer just like you do every morning when you boot up your computer. So you unlock it with a password. Now once you're into the computer, you can run TerraTerm and gain access to the Arduino Nano. So right now I have five LEDs connected to the GPIO of the Nano. So the first LED is connected to pin 8, second one pin 9, 10, 11, 12. Of course we have pin 13 on board the Nano itself, the LED. So I can control that. So I can control any of those LEDs. I also have two pots which simulate sensors. They're just voltage dividers and have them fit into A0 and A1 of the ADC converter of the Nano. So I can actually monitor the voltages uh, from the pots to simulate sensors. So I could activate any one of the LEDs. So I could turn on pin 8. So pin 8 is on. I could turn it off. Pin 9 on. Turn it off. Pin 10. So I could blink the LED on the, on the Nano. And I could turn it off. Now I have some blink sequences that I could run. So here's blink sequence 1 goes from left to right and blink sequence 2 from right to left and blink sequence 3 from the inner to outer LEDs and blink sequence 4 from outer to inner LEDs. So I can do that remotely using TeamViewer and we'll set that up and I'll demonstrate how we can actually remote into this Nano remotely using TeamViewer. Okay I've remoted in to my Arduino Nano breadboard using TeamViewer so I could be anywhere in the world. And I have my webcam pointing to the breadboard so we could actually monitor what's happening. So I have a few macros set up on my serial terminal program. So I could turn on pin 8. You see the LED comes on. I could turn it off. Pin 9. Pin 10. Pin 11. Now I could read ADC channel 0. That's one of the pots. And you can see ADC value in the voltage. And now I could read ADC channel 1. And there's the ADC value in the voltage. I could blink the LED on the nano. And I could cancel that. Now I'll do some blink sequences. Is blink sequence one, blink sequence two, three, and four. So you see, I have total control over my Arduino Nano. I could actually monitor the pins. There's all the status on the pins. You can see pins 8 to 13 is, are configured as outputs and the rest are configured as inputs. So I have total control over my Nano using TeamViewer. That's just an example of what you could do using TeamViewer and Arduino Nano.